Hi, welcome to a catalytic conversation. I'm Andy Simon, and I'm here because we are taking many of the folks who are on our wonderful event, May 13th, Catalyzing the Future, Rethinking Women's Leadership in Business, and bringing them to you ahead of time so you can share in some of their thoughts, some of their experiences, and what we're going to try and do on May 13th to assemble an amazing array of people, men and women, who are gonna tell you about how women are bringing a whole new environment into our business world here. How are we going to help them fill the pipeline so that we have all the folks who need to move into senior positions? What happens as women are moving into the C-suite and onto boards and how we're changing the experiences so we increase the equity and the inclusion and diversity in our workplace. So I have here with me, Dr. Deborah Clary and Dr. Clary is the Chief Encourager Corporate Director at Humana, an amazing organization, but a title that she herself has encouraged and, and created so that she can be the person she'd like to be now, helping women. Let me tell you a little bit about her and then we'll talk about what the panel will be discussing. Dr. Clary is an executive with three decades of leadership experience with four Fortune 100 companies, PepsiCo, Coca-Cola, Brown Foreman, and Humana. Her broad-based functional expertise spans from global operations and marketing, strategy development, human resources, to corporate boards and investor relations. Her current role as this wonderful chief encourager at Humana includes responsibilities for leadership and culture and organizational effectiveness for the office of the CEO. It's a really interesting time for her and for us. She's an author, an international speaker, a performer, an award-winning film producer, and I do think you're gonna enjoy our time together as she shares with us what we're gonna be talking about because the panel is about healthcare, access to healthcare for women. What's going on with research for women and how can we really bring the health that women need to them in a way they have the access and affordability for it. And we are at a time and it's really on the brink moment where we can turn this around and make it a really more equitable place for women and their health in America. So. Deborah, thank you for joining me. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you, Andy, for the, uh, the warm uh, greetings. Well, I'm glad that you are going to be channeling and uh, championing this panel because it's got a lot of complexity to it. So tell the, in the, the, the listener a little bit about yourself and, and how this really has meaning for you in many different ways and what we're gonna be able to do during our panel. Our job at that day is to help people walk away with a call to action that hope is not a good strategy. And this is a good time to turn that into actionable activities so we can move this wonderful needle forward. Who are you and how are we going to do this? All right, well, I wanna comment on your, your saying about, you know, hope is not a strategy. Uh, and I used to refer to it as, you know, hope is disappointment deferred. Uh, <laughs> but I do think, and I do feel extremely hopeful in terms of women in healthcare and what we are able to do. And this last, you know, 12 months, 14 months, if you will, has really put a highlight on the disparities in healthcare in general, uh, but particularly for women and uh, particularly women of color, so to speak. And so there is a, there is this beautiful opportunity for us to get after ways in which that we can improve the health uh, of women in this country. And of course, as we know, Women make the majority of the healthcare decisions in this in, in this country, um, and unfortunately, they're usually the last one to take care of their their own health, if you will. Um, but if you are motivated and you are taking care of your health, there are some still gaps in the system. And I think this panel has the opportunity to highlight where there are gaps and more specifically, what are the actions we can take to really drive health uh, for men and women uh, in this country. Well, you know, um, part of this develops because of the research that's done and who it's done on. Part of it develops because women are often so busy, it's difficult to get access, I know. But sometimes the attitudes toward women and their health aren't terribly complementary to women. And we are often seen as a problem, not as an opportunity to really do things better. The amount of C-sections, the, the number of, of women who can't get access to care because they can't afford it, um, but difficult times. You and I were talking a little bit about the research and it's, it's a bias and what's happened. How are we fixing that? 
Yeah, so here's the, the good news. In 2016, the National Institute of Health did pass a new policy in which um, by 2026, they want to have parity as it relates to research for, uh, for gender. As we know right now, um, you know, the majority of research is done on, on males, male cells, even on male animals, if you will. So by ignoring the biological differences between the sexes is really just bad science. Um, you know, without the inclusion of women, which makes up 51% of our population, we're really not serving um, our country and our, our community. Um, for uh, specifically around cardiovascular disease, um, you know, women have the majority of the, the strokes. Uh, they express um, uh, signs of, of you know, distress different from men, and sometimes it's not acknowledged that. Um, you know, in addition to that, uh, just the pharmaceutical manufacturers have been mandated by the FDA to say, you need to be recommending different doses because women are lighter weight than a, than a male. Uh, they have different fat makeup and they have different hormones. And so the, the point that I'm trying to make here is though we know what the current state is today in 2021, um, but we're really hopeful by 20, at least 26, that we can make a real change. Now, that still seems like a long way off because you know for us that are aging and we want Want, you know, better care. That's what this panel is about to say we understand the trajectory of where the institutes are going, where policy is going. But right now we have the opportunity to expedite that to accelerate it. So we do get better care in this country. You know, Humana is a wonderful organization with a concern for population and population health. Yes. And I remember how it reinvented itself. There's a real good culture there. But I'm always fascinated with what is the culture that doesn't see women as a, an extremely important part of our whole healthcare system that should be given an abundance of focus as opposed to secondary. Some of that research discussion was about if we do those studies on women, then their, their hormonal sequences will change the actual research. Um, how do we understand menopause and what it does? Those are all the questions that we should be asking, not the impediments to doing the research. So yes. this culture needs to change, doesn't it? Yes, and as you know, we women make up 51% of the population. And so, you know, by working together and coming at this in a hopeful uh, but very direct way, we can make change. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll just step back for a second. And I think about uh, when I was looking at uh, moving to a new community, finding doctors, I said, I want to go to female doctors. Um, but what I soon found out is that these female doctors were still taught in a male environment. Yes. And so they had still had their unconscious bias about how you treat women. And I learned that pretty darn fast and said, okay, I need to do my, I need to be prepared. I need to learn. I need to ask different questions and be my own advocate uh, so that I get the kind of care that's going to be important to me. Well, and, and I do think that is not inconsequential. Part of it is that we do have to take responsibility for ourselves, but we also are the healthcare manager for our whole family. And, and so at times we need to remember that our, our, the, the women that I do executive coaching with often do no self-care. And one of the things that we talked about during the pandemic period was that self-care could come first. Because if you don't take care of oneself, you can't take care of the rest of your family or anybody else. But somehow we put ourselves down below that and don't necessarily think that that's important for us. And so self-care, the care of others, the way doctors look at us, it becomes a, an important cultural transformation coming. Absolutely. And uh what I've been doing in this last 12 months is, you know, been being home on Zoom calls, if you will, is, you know, I'll ask uh, my colleagues, females, you know, what, let's, I want to just take a moment before we start is, tell me what you're doing for self-care, because I'm looking for some ideas, and I'm, I'll share with you the things that I'm doing, and it's an opportunity to open the door to inspire or encourage women that aren't doing it um, to find ways in which they can do it, um, and I have two grown daughters, and I do the same with them. You know, I'll ask, you know, what are you, what are you doing for self-care, and, and uh, just to be able to say, I'm here for you, I'm, I'm listening, and I'm learning from you. 
You know, I have two grown daughters too, and we also do exactly the same. It's interesting, isn't it? Because if they're not healthy, I feel like I've, I've missed and they're grown. I feel like I've missed part of my job. It never ends. And my granddaughters are equally important in that self-care. It's easy to forget that it matters, doesn't it? It does. It does. And, and it's amazing it just how a, a small question like that can spark um, a change, if you will. Um, at, at Humana, we uh, learned, this is about a year ago, before, before COVID, is that, you know, we looked at our, our well care, meaning, you know, we pay for our women and men to go get well care. And it was something like only 25, 30% of women were actually taking advantage of this well care. And um, I'm like, I this free, right? And, and, and you can take the time to go do this. And so I started asking women in, you know, privately, you know, hey, have you had your mammogram or have had you had this? And um, two women I asked that for, and I encouraged them to go do that, both found out that they had early stage breast cancer and, you know, quickly was able to resolve it. And it just like kind of takes your breath away by asking that small question of, hey, have you done this? You know, it's, I'm, I'm seeing the study where we're not going as often as we'd like. I want you to, I want to encourage you to go. We can do a lot for each other by just encouraging and asking the right questions. And, you know, to some degree, it shows our care to, you know, the word encourages is, is great because um, we just need a little nudge to remember that we're important too. And it's a great time. And so, that somebody else cares about you. Yes. Uh, and in this time, it's been a lot of folks I never knew before who care about each other and me. And I am finding that it's contagious, isn't it? Because as they reach out and ask how you are, you multiply how many folks you care about. It's really cool. It is really cool. Uh, any last thought as we finish our catalytic conversation, which has been absolutely delightful, that we should inspire people to come to the conference? Any last thoughts you might like to share? Yeah, it's going to be a, an amazing day. And uh, I really encourage people to, to be there, uh, to listen, come with an open heart, and you know, really walk away with saying, what actions can I take? Um, you know, not to sound corny, but how do, I, how do I make this a better place? How do I make this a better world? And that's the, the heart of a woman. Well, you know, purpose and purpose-driven living lives far better People with purpose live far better. Businesses with purpose do the same. And, and to your point, you know, come and leave with a sense that things are happening. I can do as well. It's all up to us to do it. What a great idea. Okay, cool. I urge you all to register. It's at catalyzingthefuture.com. It's a day of catalyzing the future, rethinking women's leadership in business. And what you're going to hear is a lot of folks, men and women, who are doing just that and want to help you do the same. So that the most important part, I'll say contagion gently here, is that it spins off and inspires others to do even better for ourselves and each other. So thank you so much, Dr. Deborah Clary, who's been with me today for a catalytic conversation.